This morning, I just want to uh, tell you, for those of you who may not know us, that uh, uh, we, uh, the OPC, is uh, our foundational church, and that we, uh, when we moved to uh, California in 1963, with our three little kids, uh, that we uh, had decided that we would go to church, and just down the road, a ways from big turkey farm operation that we were going to be running was a sign that said OPC, our Presbyterian Church, and it was just a mile away. Well, we kept going back and forth on the road trying to find where it was, but it turned out to be a little cinder block building. It was Sonora Grange building, and uh, but it was there that Reverend, uh, Reverend Churchill, Robert Churchill, uh, took us aside said, have you ever read the Bible? I said, no. He said, well, uh, then why don't we meet in the ante room and uh, before, during the Sunday school hour, and, I will, and uh, I'll get you started. So we began with Genesis 1-1, and a year later, I was saved and so excited about my new life in Christ. So we, uh, when, uh, we moved to the valley in uh, 65, uh, Older, so our oldest boy could go to school, and uh, and also because they wanted me to manage the hatchery as well, and uh, so we were here, bought a little farm out on Crow's Landing, off of Crow's Landing Road, third down by Monte Vista, and uh, we're here until '69 when a big company bought us out, and uh, and they wanted me to manage a research station up in Washington, and instead we went back to the family ranching operation in Eastern Oregon where I grew up on a, on a cattle ranch and, uh, and became part of another little church. And Pastor Champness, Tom Champness told us now, if you can't find an OPC or start one, why, he said, I'll uh, give you some suggestions. And he said, one of them would be a conservative Baptist church. Well, we ended up going there and that became our home church for all these years and our sending church. Um, it was a few years after we were there, about five years, that um, we had a missionary speaker one night who, uh, from New Tribes Mission, first time there'd ever been one at this little church, and uh, he told us about you know these tribes of people that never once had not one opportunity to hear the gospel. He said there's you know, they're, they're people that uh, don't speak any the language other than their own. They don't have written a written language. And so they, you can't reach them by tracts. You can't reach them by radio because they don't have radios. And uh, I, I just impacted us so strongly. We, were, we, we thought, how can we do anything else but to volunteer to the Lord? And I'd been asking the Lord, God, what more can I do for you besides raising alfalfa and beef cattle, you know? And uh, so the Lord provided an answer. And uh, we were, by this time, we had two more little boys, and uh, the youngest was just a baby. But uh, we bought some New Tribes Mission books that night and read all the brochures, and the next day we made the decision, we're going to go. But we had a little boy with a was born without a mitral valve in his heart. He was three and a half years old and he only weighed 17 pounds. Never gonna put in a, a synthetic valve, well, and that would have to be changed every few years. And the pediatric uh, uh, heart specialist there in Portland, Oregon. But, um, you know, I, I, and I told Nita, I said, what are we thinking? We can't do this. They don't have doctors where these people work. She said, we've been praying, believing God will heal his heart. There's no place in this world we can go that God isn't already there. And uh, she said, you're right. Three weeks later, we, we went down for a, a, a scheduled appointment, and they said, something's going on. Instead of having 600 pounds of pressure in his heart, where it should be 50 or 60, it's down some. We want you back here in three weeks. We went back in three weeks and we knew God had done something amazing and he had. He had a mitral valve in his heart and it was functioning. And um, he, uh, by the time we went into the training, 
Uh, six months later, he weighed 35 pounds, and he made up for lost time. And that was the thing that had kept us going all the years through the training. I'd never taken a foreign language. I'd never studied the Bible or anything. So, well, we're going to have to go to Bible school. We're going to have to go through all this education and training. And then they told me they wanted me to, that I had an aptitude for linguistics. And I said, no. And they said, yes. And if God has given you the gift, you better use it. So we ended up uh, 1978 going to Indonesia. The Lord took us there. And he took us, uh, oh, they told me now when you're, you got to get started right fast because after 40, your language learning ability starts going downhill. And uh, well, I thought, oh my word. And my whole first four years, I spent surveying other areas and islands, getting other teams established. And uh, it wasn't until right at the end of that that we finally got permission to go into this tribe that were known as being uh, very uh, intolerant of any outsiders into their territory. No one would go into that area, not even the arm, Indonesian arm, uh, the army. And so we, uh, and they told us they still had tails and all this kind of stuff. They had needed two or three hundred more years of revolution be evolution before they became people. Well, those people um, did accept us. And uh, over the next five years, it took me to learn their language, which is a very complicated language, but a wonderful language because you can be so explicit with it in translation. And um, uh, it was, uh, you know, a, an amazing thing. These people had ta all kinds of taboos. They didn't know they were Indonesians. They didn't know there was such a thing as Indonesia. They didn't know that uh, anything about God, really. They thought he lived on the moon and he had a ladder that he went up and down to get to the earth. And he had three wives or 10 wives or this, that, and the other. And I told, kept telling him, none of you agree on what God is like, but do you know what? He wrote a book about himself. And he wrote down everything is in this book that he wants every person in this world to know. And we have that book. And if you'll help us learn your language, and if you'll help us learn to live the way you do, why, we're going to uh, uh, put that book into your language. Okay. And that's what happened. We started with Genesis 1-1, just like Pastor Reverend Churchill had done with us. And uh, we taught chronologically through the Old Testament. And when we got to Gabriel telling Mar Mar <coughs> Maria at the the name, uh, name we use for Mary, um, they uh, knew this has got to be the promised one from Genesis 3.15. Yeah, you know, they were so excited. And of course, then through the life of Christ, how excited they were. And, uh, but then when Christ was crucified, the, I can't even tell you how the despair of some Others, how could God die? Jesus is God. He can't die. And others, how would God the Father allow him to die? But then there were those that said, where do those Romans live? We'll get our spears. We're going to avenge him, you know. <laughs> we'll go get them. Well, and, uh, that was uh, an amazing thing. We, so we ta retaught the lesson of Abraham sacrificing Isaac, and um, how God provided a ram in, his, in Isaac's place for the sacrifice. And this young girl, probably 15 or 16, she jumped to her feet and she said, that's it. Remember John the Baptist telling us, behold the lamb of God when I'm pointing to Jesus out to him? She said, he's, he's our Passover lamb, just like when the lambs are used for uh, bringing the people out of Egypt. He's our Passover lamb. Well, by the end of that day, we had over 100 believers, and uh, their lives changed. They were no longer governed by fear, and they, they thought they could never make paper talk to them like it did to us, but immediately they wanted to learn to read, and Anita had a literacy program all prepared, and, and the first 17 adults that were in her, uh, that she taught, uh, 
we started with adults rather than children so that the adults wouldn't be embarrassed by the little kids knowing more than they did. But uh, they, uh, do you know that in people had never seen paper and they taught them how to hold a pencil and make marks in their book, in the writing books. And, but in five and a half months, those all but one who was dyslexic, could, every one of them could read and write anything they could say in their language in five and a half months. So much for these so-called animals. Uh, and um, the government became very, very helpful to us and uh, um, provided things that we didn't expect. And uh, the work has grown. The people now, of course, they were all just in loincloths and bark skirts when we went there. But uh, the main thing they wanted was clothing so they didn't have so much trouble with mosquitoes. And we had medicine, and that really confirmed our friendship because their biggest enemy was malaria, and so many other babies died of dehydration. But um, that all changed very rapidly, and we've trained medical workers, and they now have gone to other river systems of Tugutil people and uh, have planted three more churches all on their own now. And um, we teach the literacy, teach all the chronological lessons, everything the way we did. And, but we still need people to follow up, to train, to help them with um, strategizing for reaching other areas, even for reaching other tribes. We now have already have two college graduates. Can you imagine in 35 years from not knowing anything about the world or anything about uh, books or anything like that? And we've gone from that to where we actually have college graduates. And um, it's uh, been a, a wonderful thing that God has done. We can't take credit for any of it. I wanted to quit so many times because I just, uh, I'd never get that language, but we did. And um, we're uh, just so, but the, the thing I want to share with you this morning, uh, Jesus said <clears throat> when the disciples came back to him after he had visited the woman at the well there in Samaria in uh, John 4, uh, John 4 um, verse 34, my food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. And he sent us, and that's what we desire is to finish the work. Do you not say four more months and then the harvest? I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Even now the reaper draws his wages. Even now he harvests the crop for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Thus the saying, one sows and another reaps, is true. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the hard work, and you have reaped the benefits of their labor. Do you know that's you people? You have done the hard work. It's a hard thing to be faithful in prayer. And we tell our prayer warriors and those who support us, you know, we come home and people will get out their notebook and they'll say, here, this prayer request and this prayer request, how was that answered? We've been praying for this and praying for that. They're the ones who have done the hard work because it's through prayer that God works, and we know that, and we thank you for continuing to, every year we get this uh, harvest offering, your Thanksgiving offering, and uh, we just so appreciate that. That helped make this trip possible for us this time to come down to California. And uh, do pray for the people of this huge country. I put a map up at the back there of Indonesia. It's, a, it's the fourth largest country in the world. There are over 700 languages in Indonesia. My, our youngest son has discovered three tribes in the last few years that no one knew ever, no one knew existed. They've never been documented before at all. But using Google Maps and all these and other things and foot surveys into the mountains of Irian Jaya, he has uh, uh, discovered so there are, and there are still people like this out there that have not had their first opportunity to hear the gospel. Maybe there's someone here today that God is going to call to be a part of this work that He's doing. 
And um, we now have Indonesian missionaries we've trained, uh, uh, I think over 70 families that are now uh, working among their own people. And uh, the Lord is bringing forth a great harvest. So we're very thankful for what God has done for us and through us and through all of you as you've been a part of our ministry. And thank you very much. I hope you'll take a look at that map, 17,000 islands covering an area as large as the whole United States. And uh, yeah, we just, uh, again, want to say thank you very much.